my going first? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Danny Merriman. I am a second year student finishing up my second year in the master's program and I'll be starting a PhD in the fall. Uh, I do work in Costa Rica and my advisor is Kaifer Roland. Um, I'm Levi Jacobs. I'm a first year MA student here uh, in cultural anthropology as we all are. Um, I'm provisionally working on um, I guess I am working on the intersection of spirituality and conflict um, in East Africa, probably in Uganda. Um, and my advisor is Carla Jones, who also has a video on here. I am Kate Fisher, and I'm finishing my fifth year um, here in Boulder, which is not many, not as many as it should be, I guess. It doesn't feel like five years. And I work in Costa Rica and Central Valley um, with coffee farmers, looking at the effects of CACTA um, and the changes to the welfare state that are going on with that. And my advisor is Donna <laughs> So um, I ended up getting interested in anthropology years after I graduated from undergrad. Um, I was a literature and philosophy major. And after I graduated, really wanted to just escape the country and see something different. Um, and so I was living in other countries, um, in Japan and in Uganda, and realized after a while that what I was really interested in was not um, the job that I was doing necessarily, but hanging out with people and knowing what their life was like. And then um, I was drinking with a Peace Corps volunteer in Uganda, and she had been an anthropology major. And I said, what's anthropology? And after she told me, I was like, wait, that's like what I'm doing, except I'm not getting paid to do it. <laughs> so I decided to do it, and I really didn't know what it was about. Um, and when I look back at my application now, I'm a bit embarrassed because it's clear that I didn't know. But they took me anyway because we have this terminal MA program where you know, they'll take a little bit more of a risk on you if you seem like um, you have potential, and I haven't, I haven't questioned it since. Cool. Uh, inspired. <laughs> Be inspired. <laughs> um, I came straight from undergrad, so, you know, I guess it doesn't work for everyone. I wouldn't necessarily say that the best way to go, but it can be done, and now I'm going straight to the PhD, so we'll see how it goes. But um, but I think that overall, I mean, I, I did major in anthropology as an undergrad major. Uh, it was sociology, anthropology, and also studio art, so I had mm -hmm. lots of different, different interests, but um, I think it was similar to what you're saying, that it was just overall an interest in people and an interest in understanding more about um, you know, how anthropology can be applied to just a lot of the really, really big global changes that are going on right now, and it seems like a very valuable um, subject to pursue right now. And I'm also doing a certificate in museum studies, so um, it's possible that I'll you know, take it in that more public direction or not, but I'm really interested in teaching, but it is for me more about um, talking to um, future generations spreading this mm -hmm. the anthropological way of thinking about things. I also took up a few years I was working in Chicago and I guess Boulder didn't feel very expensive after Chicago. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that's saying much. Um, I, mean, I just wasn't really sure, you know, I liked what I was doing, I was working for the Red Cross and that was great, but it just wasn't, I wanted to do something else and I sat down one day and said, okay, well, I want to teach and I want to travel. How um, <laughs> can I do that and earn at least something resembling money? And uh, decided that meant going back to school, even though I'd sworn I was never ever going back to school mm -hmm. ever. Um, getting a PhD, I think so much now, especially with the way you're looking, things are going in the world. And, I mean, anthropology is about empathy and critical thinking and questioning the way information is presented and questioning the way decisions are made and asking different kinds of questions, um, as well as making it, you know, Less, making the whole world less mysterious at the same time making it more complicated. Yeah. Right, yeah, paying attention to specifics and avoiding all of these generalizing theories that erase the actual facts of life and actually be wrong to people. Right, mm -hmm. but also saying, look, you have things in common mm -hmm. with this person you're advocating the bomb or ignore right. even, you know, maybe it doesn't even that overly yeah. violent, but. It's such a great thing to study if you're concerned with what's going on in the world because then you can talk intelligently about it and you are in a better position to do something Okay, so one thing that I really like about this department is 
I guess it's a comedy. You know, it's sort of helped by the, the physical setup of it. You know, we have our own building, um, and we have pretty much the whole third floor is almost all graduate students. We have a lot of space, uh, which I didn't realize was um, so unique because a lot of other departments don't have that kind of space where you can come in after hours, you can come in whenever you want, you can leave your things here. Uh, from, well, from what I've heard, not all graduate schools offer TA ships where you're able to teach. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. not that familiar with large institutions and their structures, but we do have recitations here, and that doesn't work for everyone, but for people who want to teach, I think that's pretty cool mm -hmm. that we have the opportunity to um, be responsible for you know up to say 45 students on a weekly basis, and we're teaching our own hour of um, discussion or you know, lecture, whatever it is, and so forth. The class and you can also you can teach summer classes um, besides TA. Once you sort of move on up, there's um, big dog. Big dog, yeah. yeah. Like that. Um, there's GPTI positions, which is graduate part-time instructor. We're paid more actually than instructors are. Um, we're not graduate students. Which I've yet to figure out that math. Mm -hmm. um, but it's and it's your class totally. So you sign the syllabus. You you know are responsible for the whole thing and that. For me, because that's what I want to do, is to teach. That's been a great um, experience, and it has said, yes, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to be here. One of the good things about um, the program is that we have this funding for, for preliminary research, like I'm going to Uganda this summer, um, just to figure out what it is that I want to research. So that's been really cool, because of course I want to go, and I can't really figure out um, how feasible it is to research some things without being there. And obviously, being a graduate student, it's hard to fund that trip myself. So it's been awesome to get that money. Um, it is definitely its own place. I think a lot of that is because it's a university town. So it you know draws out some people. There's also a lot of people that work at the different uh, government research centers. So it's allegedly we're the smartest and the fittest city in the country. Um, <laughs> according to various people who decide these things. Um, I don't know how they that but we are um, so there's a lot of outdoor options for sure I feel like it's legally required that you participate in some kind of endurance or adrenaline activity yes um, you can live here certainly not do those things but I do so I like that um, like the bike paths are everywhere they mm -hmm. plow the bike paths before they plow the streets if they plow the streets yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's all there's I don't know how many restaurants yeah absurd yeah. quantities yeah I have lots of friends in Denver and whenever I tell them that like I live in Boulder Oh, you have so many good places to eat. Well, I have the money. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, Which is the side of both of them. Right. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of yeah. people here. Part of, part of the, other, the other bubble aspect besides the exercise and the student population is the wealth, which mm -hmm. is great in the fact that we have really nice parks and bike paths mm -hmm. and, and everything is recyclable yeah. and compostable and, and free compost. Um, yeah, and it's everywhere, but then at the same time, I mean, the sales tax is pretty high. Mm -hmm. Food in general, grocery stores are more expensive in Boulder. Mm -hmm. Everything is basically a little bit more expensive. Also, I mean, in addition to having our own building that's really beautiful, we're really close to, I like the fact that we're kind of on the edge of campus. So to get to campus, you don't have to go through the rest of campus. You yeah. can come at it from the side. You don't have to go through the really crazy sidewalk areas where there's tons of undergrads everywhere. And you also are right on the edge where you have access to lots of places to get coffee and food and yeah. drinks. And, yeah, and drinks. Yes. Um, Which is also dangerous. <laughs> right. It's true. <laughs> but, but, but it's just a nice, and it's pretty close to downtown, so it's very accessible for people who live in 